back to another week of the Paintbrush Social Club. I'm your host, Sean D. Skellington. As always, for four weeks, we have nine competitors going head-to-head in grueling competition, battling it out for their spot in our final to win a cash prize. A prize package from Waco Rage Room, a feature here at Skellington Curiosities, and the title of King or Queen of the Paintbrush Social Club. Up first, she's an amazing tattoo artist, and her hair color changes about as much as the Texas weather. Let's meet tattoo artist Rissa Adamson. Oh man, um, it's a little bit all over the place. I mean, I'm a tattoo artist, so I do a little bit of everything. Um, just whatever people are into, I find a way to make it fun. Up next, this big teddy bear is an abstract portrait artist, and he's also one of the hosts of Not Your Mama's Art Podcast, Mr. Zachary Jones. Chaos, and with some some sort of uh, main focus, like some sort of person or some sort of thing, it's a lot of abstract, just throwing paint on canvas. Last, but clearly not least, this man is a rising superstar on the underground graffiti scene, Mr. Tim Webb. So my art style is graffiti. I do big giant things, 10 by 10, my normal size. Uh, so kind of stepping out of my element, but I think I'm pretty well rounded enough to at least put up a fight. So. I said it once, I say it again. Art is one of the most subjective things on the planet. That's why each week I bring in three new guest judges from diverse backgrounds to tear your art apart. Up first, she is the owner of Mod Ministry Merch. She's the co-owner of Skellington Curiosities, one of the hosts of the Necroelectric Podcast, and My Beautiful Bride. Stay spooky. Kylie Skellington. Look for definitely composition, um, completion. Uh, if the design really flows and completes the challenge. He is an entrepreneur and one of the co-founders of the East Side Market here in Waco, Texas, Mr. Eric Lenardes. Creating something entirely creative, entirely different with it. I want to see what they got. If you've been to Central Texas and seen a badass show, it is probably because of this next judge. She is the co-founder of Keep Waco Loud, the talented Mrs. Katie Selman. Um, I'm looking for creativity. I'm looking for originality. Um, I'm looking for people who are going to follow the prompt and just somebody who wows me. All right, artists, get your asses in the workshop and let's make some art. All right, artists, for your first sketch challenge, you will have 30 minutes to draw this. On the table is a dissected partial human skull. The skull is a medical skull from 1885. Your sketch challenge today will be to design whatever you want, but you must incorporate the skull. What are you waiting for? Your time starts now. Sketch challenge is going great. It's definitely a head-to-head competition. All three of these artists are amazing and their sketches are coming through great. It's gonna be so hard to pick a winner. Like they're all three so so phenomenal artists 
and it's, it's going to be neck and neck. They're doing so well. Every one of these artists has such a unique style. They all are just like looking at it in a completely different way and it's all kind of like they all have their own personal style that they're working with. So it's come together real cool, but I'm still, I want to see what the finished product is. Uh, Marissa is an old friend of mine. We went to art school together back in the day. She always whooped my ass back then, so I was hoping for a little bit of <laughs> come up into that. So that You're down to ten minutes. Just trying to get my thought on paper. It's a little tough, but just made it work. It was a little bit stressful in the sketch challenge because uh, I just knew there wasn't enough time to do what I was trying to do. I took on a little bit more than I think I should. All right, Zach, you're up first. Tell me about this sketch. Uh, I use mainly a brush pen for all the shading and everything, so I just like to do hatching and stuff like that for my shading, kind of give it more depth. Zach, uh, I think you met the challenge. You incorporated uh, Esther's partial skull, kind of blended the life with death. I like it, man. Uh, Katie, what do you think? I get that tattooed on my body. I think it's so cool. Um, I absolutely love how you kind of took a skull of somebody we don't know and kind of created a person. What about you, love? What are your thoughts? All right, Zach. I love this. I love that it shows like the duality. It's like life and death together, and it really captures Esther. In my opinion. What you think, Eric? Like the uh, the creativity behind it, the way you built the scene with her and her uh, shoulder tattoo looking over the head, over her shoulder. I, I like kind of what it represents. I love the fact that you kind of explain that you were trying to capture this this, uh, this idea of Esther being more of an edgy woman and in those times edgy women were not welcome apparently. <laughs> um, 
incarcerated. Yeah. The, the only thing is as well is that uh, a you know, 30 minutes isn't a lot of time, and so some of it kind of kind of goes more into just a regular, you know, sketch type thing. Well, it's not, it doesn't feel completely finished, but the, the idea behind it, I, I really love it. All right. Up next, Rissa. Tell us about this sketch. I mean, I was, I liked that it was like a half a skull thing laying there, so I tried to translate that. Um, I put a little candle in there for a little bit of light and some little sprigs of lavender for a little something pretty. Um, I The charcoal is really fun to smear around, so I mostly just, my goal was to have fun. From a distance, it's a little hard to read, but I dig it. What do you think, Katie? Yeah, I I second everybody's opinion here. It's, it's a really, it's probably the best representation of the actual skull, and I feel like we're at Esther's funeral. Kylie, what are your thoughts? Rissa. I think this turned out amazing. I love the charcoal. It's a very interesting medium. The candle was a great touch to kind of add that little light source to it. And lavender, I love lavender. So um, it, it gives that really creepy, beautiful vibe. Creepy and beautiful. <laughs> Eric. Yeah, I second that truth in this because I saw you were using a lot of uh, reference pictures in terms of getting pores right on us with actual skull. Uh, I love that. I love that you're trying to really, really just kind of replicate it. And then the, the candle, the medium you use, of course, is really, really well known for shading. So you you went above and beyond with the shading. You, you had some fun, I can tell, just going all around it. But I, I think I love the scene that you painted. I love what you created. Up next. Tim. Yeah. So I um, obviously graffiti style. I had to throw some color in there. Uh, skull, tongue at the end, uh, rose. Really tie in the red. You put a full skull in there. Didn't really match the challenge of incorporating the partial. And yeah. So. All right. What do you think, Katie? Yeah, I mean, I think you took the most risk, for sure. It's the most abstract. The other two are much more, you know, you, you have a real woman and a real scene with, you know, flowers and stuff, and yours has got, like, a tongue coming out with a rose. I love it. It's very, very good. You also started off really strong, too, the whole way. Like, sometimes I was like, I don't know what's going on, and then everybody kind of came together, and it was perfect, but it's, I, I love it. Kylie. Uh, feel Esther in this one. Eric. Yeah, uh... I'm really, I love clean lines, you know, I love the graffiti style, you, you really went in there with the color, uh, the color just balances out, I like that you put in the tongue at the very end to, to balance the red out, the, the shading that you did even with the markers was pretty cool, but the, yeah, the only thing is the fact that the technicality of, the, you know, it is a full skull and not the, not that search skull, but it, it's sick nonetheless. Alright guys, the judges have made their decision, the winner! of the sketch challenge is... Stay tuned to find out after a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by MC Art Supplies. MC Art Supplies has a great selection of art supplies from oil, acrylic, watercolor, spray paints, brushes, pens, pencils, markers, canvas, and pottery tools, and much, much more. Visit us at 2025 Washington Avenue in Waco, Texas. This episode is brought to you by Central Texas Artist Collective. Central Texas Artist Collective exists to foster creative expression through the heart of Texas by unifying and growing arts and cultural programming, enhancing arts education and access for all. Visit us at centechartistcollective.org. All right, guys, the judges have made their decision. The winner of the sketch challenge is Zachary Jones. Well, I, it was nice to win. That was really cool. <laughs> I enjoyed that for sure. It was cool to be the guy they, they picked in the sketch challenge. That was great. Uh, I think any one of those pieces could have been it. So. Zach, you have just won the power to decide the subject matter for the canvas painting. What are you choosing? Horror. Zach has chosen horror. Awesome. You have one hour to complete a painting of anything in the horror genre. Your time starts now. 
Um, it's incredibly stressful and I am extremely concerned I'm not going to come up with something good in time. In a Canvas challenge, I'm looking for the composition, the challenge being completed, obviously. Also, the artists putting in their own flair and their own style to really represent themselves. When I think horror, I think everybody is scared of clowns, so I'm going to go with it, but the original. You've got 30 minutes. These artists are insane. Every, like I said, every one of them has such an individually unique style, and, and so far, like every canvas has such a crazy amount of creativity that's going into it. it just, it, you know, I think it's going to turn out really awesome. Uh, so far, they're just like blowing me away with what they're able to accomplish right now. Uh, only 30 minutes in, so we'll see what happens at the finished product. But so far, this thing is going to be insane. It's going really great. Uh, the artists, I cannot believe what they have accomplished in such a short amount of time. Um, the fact that they're doing this in under an hour and it already looks like finished paintings in like 20 minutes, I'm way better than anything I could ever do. Horror movies are my thing. That is my bread and butter. I'm gonna bring everything I possibly can to this and uh, it's gonna be hard to beat, I guarantee that. You have 10 minutes. One minute remaining. Again, I don't know who would win that round. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Time is up, goddammit. Let's judge it. Up first, Zachary Jones. Tell me about this painting, bro. So yeah, I went with Beetlejuice, mainly because I brought some paints and the color palette I brought, it was like the purple, the green, the gray. I was like, ah, I know that guy. <laughs> and so I got into one of my favorite characters in my favorite style and just like slang a bunch of shit at it. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's just chaos, but it's fun. Dude, I love Beetlejuice. I love anything Tim Burton. Uh, I think he did an exceptional job here. Um, not a whole lot I can rip apart, man. Uh, very creative. Katie, what do you think? You captured the chaos of Beetlejuice very well. Because um, Beetlejuice himself is messy and all over the place, and it's got the perfect color palette. Um, and yes, Beetlejuice is horror to me. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, um, I, I love it. What do you think, beautiful? Uh, I love Beetlejuice. It's one of my favorite characters. I don't know if you'd really say it's horror. If Beetlejuice is a horror movie. I will always say Beetlejuice is horror for sure. I love Beetlejuice. I only wish I would have seen a little bit more creativity with the pose because it is that classic Beetlejuice face pose that I feel like I see everywhere. Eric, what do you think? Man, I think the I think it's your style, bro. Your style has such a unique kind of a essence to it. The texture, the colors, the the chaotic nature of it. And I think it falls very well within the, the binds of like who he, Beetlejuice is, because he is a force of chaos. He is like just kind of this mm, off the wall crazy. So your color palette, the the just the amount of stuff that you brought into it, I think it really captured him. So thank you. Up next, Rissa. Tell me about your painting. Um, so I just did my take on Queen of the Damned. It's a little expressionistic and loose, but I feel like I almost bit off more than I could chew because the little details in there, but it was really fun. Um, I just tried to keep it loose and real dark and a little creepy, but also sexy at the same time. Uh, only critique, maybe you could use some brighter colors just to make it give that little je ne sais quoi. But other than that, it looks fucking dope. Katie, what do you think? I definitely think you took on the most, like the biggest project of the three. Like that was a huge undertaking and you, you executed it very well. Um, I, I mean, I feel like it could be like in a, like a really cool art gallery, like a museum or something. It's very, very good. Um, beautiful. You did a great job. What about you, Kylie? It is definitely dark and creepy and sexy, and you pulled it all off in an hour, nonetheless. I'm, I'm almost speechless. I just love it. Eric. Yeah, uh, I'm a sucker for that expressionist style. You know, I love that. Did, did you captured that that regalness to her, the being the queen, but at the same time, the, the you know, what looks like the heart that she's got in her hand, just kind of ripping apart someone. So it's both beautiful and, you know, frightening. All right, Tim, step up. Tell me about this painting, man. All right, when horror instantly did clown with the original Tim Curry, um, I actually got to add some of my spray paint, get back in my element a little bit, since I have no idea what I'm doing with acrylics, but kind of stuck to the Tim Curry, creepy, real close up, bigger, I like to do big things obviously, but it's a uh, big clown for y'all at least. <laughs> I feel like you're adapting your graffiti style to the canvas, it looks a little stretched, um, but overall man, I fucking dig it. Katie, what do you think? That is what nightmares are made of. <laughs> I'm going to be thinking about that tonight when I go to sleep, and it's going to be really scary. Um, <laughs> it's beautiful, though. The detailing of it is great. Um, again, I love that you went out there and spray painted. At first, I was like, where did he go? Like, maybe he's already done and just chilling in the, like, outside. And I was like, oh, no, he's actually spray painting. Um, so that that's just really cool. And you brought your own personality into it, so. What do you think, love? I love it. I love the angle that it's at. I feel like it just gives it this very dynamic, scary. It's like the angle right when he's above you about to like kill you, you know? I love it. it it's terrifying. Eric, take us home, man. Uh, I, love, I love the fact that you got back into your uh, your element with the graffiti. You're able to use spray paint because yeah, you, you, the fi final touches on it really brought it through. and. It's got such depth to it, you know, it's very, very kind of a, a emotional piece which just in your face, you know, that, that fear base on the, the left eye for me is just like, oh, man, <laughs> that's, that's horror right there. The judges have made their decision. The winner to go on to our final episode to compete for a cash prize, a prize package from Waco Rage Room, a feature at Skellington Curiosities, and a chance to be the king or queen of the paintbrush social club goes to... Come on, you knew this was coming. <laughs> Stay tuned to find out after.
a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Waco Rage Room. Pissed off, angry, or just want to have some fun? Don't break your stuff, break ours. Our mission is demolition. Come visit us at 1007 Wooded Acres Drive, Waco, Texas. This episode is also brought to you by Hype Waco for all your urban and vintage clothing needs. Massive sneaker selection and accessories. New inventory frequently. The judges have made their decision. The winner to go on to our final episode to compete for a cash prize. A prize package from Waco Rage Room. A feature at Skellington Curiosities. And a chance to be the king or queen of the paintbrush social club goes to Rissa Adamson. Now in the presence of greatness, cause right now thou is forsaken us. You should be honored by my lateness, that I won't even show up to this fake shit. So go ahead, go nuts. Congrats, Rissa. You have kicked ass, and we will see you at the final episode. Uh, I didn't expect it. Not even a little bit. Um, Oh, almost overwhelming. I feel like Yeah, I mean, he killed it. I, I was hanging that up in my apartment as well. Thanks to all of our sponsors. Thanks to everybody that's watching this. And we will see you next time.